Today has the possibility to be a pretty exciting day. Well, I'm not making any guarantees. I don't know what I'd do without all of you in the YouTube comment section, just for the simple fact that you teach me things that I don't already know that I probably should. Into the sun we go. That 35 foot draper was already pulled out this morning before I even got to work. If that tells you the state of the boss's mindset right now. He's chomping at the bit. We're not cutting any soybeans yet. That's all we need the engine for, for now. I've been cleaning the windows on these combines for probably 15 years now and no one ever told me that there was a way to access in between the cab window and the grain tank window until you all in the comment section brought me to salvation. Pop open. That dust is old enough to vote. Oh sh! I normally would not suggest laying on top of the unloading cross augers. These are desperate times. Great way to start your morning. Sun in your eyes and smell of rotten beans in your face. In case anyone was wondering what it looks like from the green tank looking out, hopefully you never get to watch this one while you're harvesting. And that project's over. Oh yeah, that's a world of improvement compared to what it was like before. To be completely honest, although this window does offer some functionality for the combine operator to check the quality of the grain, the cleanliness of the sample, the person who is really concerned about what goes on behind this window is usually sitting in the buddy seat. It's always the little farmers that like to sit and watch the grain tank fill up with grain. Somehow one project always turns into two, and two turns into three, and three turns into four. Back in the grain tank. Our grain tank needs a little bit of surgery. I don't think even a kernel of corn could fit through there. At the right angle with enough pressure, a lot of corn could fit through there if it blew open. So we're gonna try and glue it back together. Fortunately for us, we have our plumber's tape, festively colored green, and not super glue, but crazy glue. We've improved it slightly. Definitely haven't fixed it though. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is a sight for sore eyes. Look at those nice, mature Asgro 35XF1 soybeans, planted the 23rd of April. They're closing in on the finish line. These beans are so close to harvesting that you can almost smell it. Or maybe that's just me. Do a quick thresh check. The pods are popping right open. Moisture check. Some crunch to them. I put them probably 15 to 16 percent, which is really, really close to bringing a combine out here. I will say that I'm probably the only moisture checker on our farm that is more expensive than the combine. Do one more for good measure. Pods dry, popping right open. Missed that bean. We'll do a third one because the second one failed. Pods dry, popping right open. A little bit chewier. 
readjust my measurement to 16 to 17%. We are looking for sub 15% before we would consider combining any beans. That's mainly for the fact that if you get close to 15% plus on moisture, you're going to get eaten alive by dockage and shrink at your elevators. There are certainly areas out here that look good. However, there's also areas out here that are very questionable. A lot of yellow pods, which is indicative of what we would call butter beans, meaning that one, they wouldn't want to thresh, and two, they're definitely not going to test moisture wise pop that open and you clearly see a high moisture bean you look at that on a larger scale there's gonna be a lot of beans out in this field that are still way too wet obviously our first consideration is the moisture aspect of these wet beans secondly if we do not get the pods open we run the risk of just shooting them out the back of the combine and not capturing them in the grain tank which is money lost stems are still somewhat pliable even on the dry plants now of course you can't overcome pliable stems with horsepower which is exactly what our john deere combines have regardless though these beans are not in ideal harvesting condition yet as much as we'd like them to be man look at those beans those are yielders even though i'd love to bring out a combine today and just mash these through unless we get a lot of heat and wind probably still a couple days out that is a little bit disappointed because other farmers are out in the fields right now cutting soybeans. These are a 3 5 bean, not really expecting them to go first other than them being planted early enough to mature quicker. Farmers that are cutting beans today are probably working on shorter season beans like a 3 0 or a 2 9 that were planted around the same time frame. If these were a 2 9, a 3 0 or a 3 1 bean planted on the same exact date that these 3 5s were, we would be cutting them today. Not only are there other farmers chewing through beans right now, ADM indicator is offering a dollar 84 over the futures price. That's in comparison to our local elevators that are 35 cents under. So if we could cut these beans today, truck them 35 to 40 miles to ADM, we would be capturing over $2 a bushel. That is a mind blowing premium. If you tack $2 a bushel on 80 bushel beans out on this field, that's $160 an acre profit versus cutting these and taking them to our local elevator and selling them cash. I don't know how the math works on that, why ADM is bidding so aggressive to get beans today through the 23rd, which is a couple days away from when this was filmed. I don't know if we're going to make it to get them cut. I would like to because $2 an acre on 80 bushel beans, $160 an acre, $160 an acre on 220 acres. I'll let you guys sit on those numbers. That's about $35,000 that we would gain if we could get these combines through, but I just don't think that they would test and they may not pass on a quality check with all of the butter beans that'd be in them. At this point in the video, I'm sure some of you are curious about the bandage on my nose, and I think it's finally time to come out with the truth and just tell you, Dad and I finally had enough of each other. We squared up and just socked each other in the face at the same time. This is my injury. His is a lot worse. That's why I haven't seen him today. No, I'm just kidding. All jokes aside, based on some of the concern from my wife, my family members, and a few of you in the comments section, again, helping me out, had a dermatologist look at this little spot on my nose. They said it's either just scar tissue from a pre-existing injury and or possibly some form of skin cancer. However, statistically speaking, highly unlikely at my age, that's what it is. And it's not really unfathomable to think that I haven't cut myself right here at one point or another in my lifetime. So they took a biopsy. That's why I've got the bandage. Should have the results in 10 to 14 days. Uh, most likely nothing, but just want to let you know I'm getting that checked out. It looks like someone overfilled the fuel tanks. Always happens. About two seasons ago, we had that same issue present itself on our S670 combine. We thought we had a major fuel leak starting to happen. Turns out after extensively researching the area that we'd filled the tanks up way too high. And I guess the heat expanding the volume of that fuel caused it to become either pressurized enough or too volumetrically large to fit in the tank. So ultimately it worked its way out, but not really a major issue. Just wasted a gallon or two of fuel. The other combine looks the same way. That's why you don't top them off like I did. Really don't have anything pressing to do other than calibrate the auto steer domes. The chance of us cutting any beans today is slim to none, but if you can't tell, I'm getting kind of antsy. Just want an excuse to get both combines out. Okay, let's make quick work out of this calibration. We just need to turn around and pull back through that same line and we'll be calibrated. 
pretty simple stuff here. Grain compensation module for the GPS is calibrated. Wait, what? Error, vehicle still facing the original direction? Well, that's just not true. Oh, here we go again. There we go. Should have worked the first time. As much as I'd love to sit in the 780 all day, I don't believe there's anything else we can do in here. The old timers say a watch pot never boils. So I wonder if a soybean field with two combines sitting next to it never dries. Wow, it's hot in here. AC, AC. It's your turn, old lady. This looks like a pretty good spot. Ready to go. We'll put it back in the barn for now. Might as well check and see if these beans have changed at all in the last 30 minutes. Because that's a lot of time, you know. I think it's just wishful thinking at this point to think those have any chance of going anytime soon. Capturing that absolutely juicy premium for soybeans to ADM and Decatur is half the battle, but the other half is just wanting to know what these soybeans are gonna make. It's been a big question mark. They look like they've had great yield potential. We had some issues with SDS or sudden death syndrome, among other things. And the curiosity at this point is just becoming overwhelming. I almost wanna bring a combine out here and cut a sample just for the sake of knowing what are these soybeans gonna yield? It's getting to that time of the year. We're just getting Stir crazy. We'll just come back in another 10 or 15 minutes, check them again. Any chance of cutting soybeans today is slowly fading away. There's a rain on the radar about 20 miles to the west, and I can guarantee you that if it starts to sprinkle, no shot we cut any beans. Really going to make too big of a difference in the grand scheme of things but it did in fact rain a couple tenths of an inch of rain last night those soybeans that we've been keeping an eye on are still on the verge of being harvestable the sun is out the wind's blowing and we're in kind of the low 70s temperature wise i doubt that they go today but we are going to go ahead and grease all of our grain trucks in preparation for the season <laughs> any new additions to the grain trucks this fall possibly these midland mxt 115 gmrs radios we've got one in three out of the four of our trucks the fourth one which is what jeff was servicing we just didn't have an extra radio to put in it so it's not quite as important but three out of the four is a big deal a radio like this is so valuable to streamlining your harvesting operations, especially if you're outsourcing to new non-family trucking people. If we've got a driver coming in that's not familiar with our farm, we wanna be able to chat with them quickly, this Midland radio will allow us to do that. We will have six of them in communication with each other, two on the combines, one on the cart, and three in trucks. And of course, I've got another four handheld radios that might be of use. I definitely think that this will make our lives much easier if you guys are in the market for a radio, follow the link in the description to check out Midland. They're great.
after about an hour of crawling around on the ground, one very messy load of laundry in the future, and five or six tubes of grease, all four of our grain trucks are greased up, ready to haul some grain. Now we just need some grain to haul. While Chris and Jeff pull those trucks in and flip the PTO speed on the 7800, I've got some digging to do. So close, yet so far away at the same time. What a shame. Here's the field that that black fit ideal combine was picking two or three weeks ago. Stock's already started to decompose. Looks like it's ready to be hit with some tillage. And here is our stop. Wow, the neighbor's beans are real close to being able to cut. If they've been out to look at them, I need to shoot them a text. This right here is where we're going to be working. Some of you may recall last fall when my dad was crossing this with the S780 combine that the angle of the hillside and the piles of dirt on both sides presented a challenge, mainly in the fact that it had the combine at a very wonky angle. He was concerned. You had to back out of it, get straightened back out. So what we are here to do is shave off a couple foot of topsoil on both sides of this Kentucky Bridge or Mississippi Bridge, Missouri Bridge. Regardless of whatever you want to call it, it is a water crossing to a drainage ditch. There's no water running right now, but when we do get a lot of rain, it comes through here. It's more of a supplemental ditch than an active creek or river flowing. And we trim off some of this dirt. This wasn't an issue until we upgraded to that bigger 780. The duels on it must just sit a little bit wider. I'm fairly certain that my personal purgatory is going to be coming back and being the backhoe on our farm for a couple years because that poor thing just gets worked to death. Here is our finished project. We are going to step it off and make sure we have about 20 foot for the combine to come through here without stepping up on any ridges. The main concrete pad in the bottom of the ditch is only 15 foot wide or so. Combine's not going to have any problems crossing mud into that lower spot. Semi trucks may need to be careful because that'll be kind of misleading the width of that. They're going to need to stay over here. Nine paces, which probably makes this 25 to 30 foot wide. Definitely acceptable for a combine. I think at most the outer side of the duels might be 18 foot. 20 would definitely be pushing it. I think that we will be able to get through here without any issues. Possibly over time, the water washing through here from heavy rains built some dirt up on the shoulders, which created issues. We got the big combine. It changed the dimensions required for us personally. So we fixed that. We do own this farm and a small piece over here. However, this area right here, the lane that we access with, isn't technically our property. I did get the express permission of the landowner to do a little demolition out here. He had no problems, so should be good to go. Fingers crossed that Marty doesn't almost flip his combine here this season. Looks like they finished up whatever they were working on while I was gone, which works for me. It doesn't appear that a whole lot has changed out in this field. Still some green leaves here and there, some green pods. Maybe slightly less than yesterday. Day by day they are getting farther along, but the question still remains, are they dry enough to harvest without losing unnecessary bushels out the back from them being too wet? And of course, can we even get them to test at the appropriate moisture to not get docked a lot at the local elevator? It's just a tough thing to decide on. You got beans that are ample dry, stock quality, it's probably at a place where you'd harvest it just for the fact if it's snapping over it's going to thresh good. Then you look lower in the canopy, for some reason you have a bunch of green plants. And this, like I said, is where your issues are really going to surface. Beans like this are going to be troublesome. Even if you do get them threshed correctly, then you start to see your average moisture in the field go up. It's just a difficult spot to be in. I can tell you just from knowing the mindset of the boss of the operation, that if these are not ready by Monday, we will try to cut them on Monday. That just seems to be the way it goes. That is three or four days from now. I'm not sure what day of the week it is. It's starting to turn into that time of year where the calendar does not matter. The premium at ADM and Decatur expires tomorrow at the end of the day. I don't think we're gonna make that deadline, unfortunately. I personally would try to mash them through, but 
dad doesn't want to risk doing that and losing unnecessary bushels out here in the field which is a respectable decision i already mentioned earlier in the video just how delectable that premium is being almost two dollars better on cash than our local elevators we could sell beans here for 14.50 give or take cash we could take them to adm and decatur get close to 16.50 those are just rough numbers that is a massive difference two dollars a bushel is 13 or 14 percent improvement over local prices now adm indicator is 40 miles away so it probably cost us 25 to 30 cents a bushel rough rough estimate on trucking costs but at the end of the day you are still extremely in the positive on that transaction don't think that's going to happen just wishful thinking but i know a lot of farmers here in east central illinois and south central illinois have taken advantage of that premium if they had beans ready to cut just for a quick reference point there are the three fives that we're waiting to harvest and here are some four o's that really are not going to be far behind surprisingly i think that those beans are going to be knocking on the door of a record for that field these beans though may take the cake for some of the best beans we have this year in terms of total average yield on the farm although looks can be misleading they look pretty good and i think that barring a few spots across the middle that you can't really see from this angle they're going to be pretty close to harvested once that's done i would need to walk out into the field to actually get a pretty good moisture check or a fair one at least <laughs> what i just pulled right there probably 13 to 14 percent the rest of the field though may not average quite that low i bet you these are kind of averaging 16 to 17 if we brought a combine out here not to mention that i don't have to look too far to find green pods or yellow pods that probably have those moist butter beans in them i don't think we're going to have any combining to do today or in the next few days unfortunately as much as i'd like to be out here testing out the green machines seeing what yields we're bringing in i don't think that's going to happen i'm just going to have to live vicariously through all the other farmers in our area harvesting as well as the other farmers on youtube that are going at it right now but i can guarantee you this that the next upload after this video we will be harvesting soy beans guaranteed stamp my name on that that's going to be it for now though i do greatly appreciate all of you tuning in make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and comment down below if you have any questions you know i love to talk about farming have a great day everyone peace